With two superhero movies, need a little time off. Um, ultimately, I shot out of it because I felt there wasn't enough meat in the bones to actually rev- sort of discuss this for like 15, 20 minutes. I didn't feel like it was a headline topic. Uh, and ultimately, I went with The Killers of the Flower Moon. And like, that's a nice easy one because it's reviews. You can read through them. You can chat shit. Then at the end, like I just did, you can see it's all meaningless and it's your opinion that counts. This is a little bit harder to get into, but it's subjective again. Sub- subjectivity around arts is something that's ever present. Opinions are like arseholes, as they do say, everyone's got one. And uh, mine's is no less or more valid than Matthew Vaughan, who's been coming out and actually suggesting that they may need a little bit of time off. And I'm going to get into it, and I've, I've, I've got several tabs opened with different superhero movies going back the last 10 years the actual individual calendar years of superhero movies I'm just going to look through them and I'm going to look to see if there's any signs of drop off in quality now I know for a fact from Marvel in the last 2 or 3 years there's been a very definite drop off in quality in terms of the cinematic releases anyway there has been some excellent ones in there Um, I've really enjoyed a couple and I'll get into that and realistically, I think this is a bit of a a null point, if you like, a null point. I think that's what that means. I'm not French. Because ultimately, you can say they need a break off, a break, a, a little bit of time off. But realistically, these studios are not going to take a break. This is the sort of golden eggs. This is their ability to break a billion dollars, even a, a, an average to decent superhero movie. If it resonates with the right people, and it's got rewatchability, it's going to make close to a billion dollars. And it's much easier to do that than it is to come up with a really wacky original independent idea like a Barbie. They come along once in every fucking 10 years, if that, maybe 20 years. It's much, much easier to just keep churning out average superhero movies. So regardless of whether they do need a bit of time off or not, I absolutely do not believe we're anywhere near getting a break from superhero movies. But Matthew Vaughn's been out. This guy's no stranger to superhero movies. We were discussing him the other day. Kick-ass. He's, um, he's been deep in that experience. And indeed, when you actually... I've got another article, potentially, I, w- I want to say, the best superhero movies from each individual year going back, Lord knows, 20-odd years or something. One of his is actually in there, I'm sure. Kick-ass. So, uh, yeah, this is what you had to say. He was talking to... Screen rant at the New York Comic Con and he explained that he believes what he believes is a problem with the superhero genre. He shared his hopes that someone would break the mould and make something great. However, he also believes that this genre has forgotten what may be the key to bringing back what has made superhero movies so popular in the last few years. I agree with what he's saying. Incidentally, I've discussed this time and again. You look at some of the best movies in the last decade and what stands out is they're doing what he is suggesting in this, art, this sort of quote here, but he had this to say, I genuinely don't know what's happening with the superhero in the sense that I do think maybe we all need a little bit of time off from it. Maybe someone will make something so great that we will get excited again and remind everybody that just having identical ways of making superheroes, superhero films are films. It's a film that has superheroes in it. I think what happened was that they became superheroes in the film part wasn't that important and I, I fundamentally agree with that and he does he mentions a sort of dabbling with genres I'm pretty sure he does anyway um, I may have read that somewhere else it may have been in this opinion piece but just multi-genre exploration in superhero movies is something that's been so important over the last 10 years I think of Logan it's a gritty western it just so happens to have a superhero in it I think of try to think of the other examples off the top of my head here now and I've maybe bitten off more than I can chew but there's been other examples, I'm absolutely certain of it, where you are exploring genres within genres. It's a superhero genre, but there is traditional, more horror style it's things being dabbled with, more sort of Western, gritty human condition, potentially with Joker. There's, is that a superhero film? He's a villain, I don't know. It's a comic book movie. They've been dabbling, and usually when you look at those movies, those are the highest rated, the best performing ones. Obviously, the huge ensemble Avengers movies aside, they are their own thing. They exist in a different pocket universe. They do what they do brilliantly. I don't know why I brought this back to me, incidentally, because I'm going fucking back here again. But yeah, I mean, I I, I tend to agree with them. Um, They've forgotten about 
the actual art of making a film and just putting superheroes in there and hoping that there's enough interest in that side of things that it, it sort of papers over the cracks. And the best example for me is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. It's just fucking rubbish. It's, it's, to me, it's rubbish. There's no real coherent story in there. You bring in this America Chavez, I think, character. She's just getting battered from pillar to post. It's meant to be a Doctor Strange movie, but it ultimately becomes a fucking Natasha... Not Natasha, Wanda Maximoff, Scarlet Witch movie. She overpowers it, and ultimately she's so powerful that it's impossible to outdo her in that, that movie. It was just... It was, it was a strange, strange experience. It felt... muddled, shambolic... And I think this is something that's been seen time and again with Marvel post Endgame. There's been a couple of outliers, No Way Home, Guardians of the Galaxy I really enjoyed, but for Love and Thunder, just forgot to make a film. We thought we'll bring in Christian Bale, award, Academy Award winning actor, we'll bring back all the, the things that worked, we'll bump the humour up to 200% in this one, and it surely will be a success. Well, it wasn't, because the movie wasn't compelling, the story was fucking rubbish. Plain and simple. And then you, you sell it with Guardians of the Galaxy and they're in the movie for about a half a minute. So they missold it as well. to add insult to injury. So I, I actually agree with Matthew Vaughn. They've forgotten how to actually make movies. And over and above that, with the Marvel side of things, the cinematic universe, they're trying to connect everything before they've earned the right to. They're doing what DC did in 2015, 2016. They're rushing it. Instead of getting back and doing what made them all the success and all the money back in the day in 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, up to the Avengers movie, which was 12. Brilliant standalone movies that work in their own right with coherent stories, but then you'll tack something on in the end credits, the post credit scene. They've forgotten about that. They'll try to connect everything. It's just manic and it's not working because the movies are flopping all over the place. They're not making money. Certainly not the money they were making even three, four years ago. And that's something I'm going to get into, man. You go into 2013, best movies, superhero movies of 2013, we've completely ignored super buddies and sparks. I don't know what the fuck these movies are. Kick-Ass 2 was underwhelming. It wasn't Kick-Ass 1. But Man of Steel, I love Man of Steel. It's a great movie, one of the best Superman movies ever made. The Wolverine's fucking shite. This is maybe not the best year. This is maybe not the best example. <laughs> this is maybe the, not the best example because you've got Iron Man 3, which I didn't love, and you've got For the Dark World, which was arguably one of the worst Marvel movies ever made. G.I. Joe's in there as well. So this was a really bad year for superhero movies. Man of Steel aside, Kick-Ass 2 was watchable. It was fine. So we'll just completely ignore that. We'll go to a nine-year period. <laughs> uh, Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Uh, I don't know what that is. Oh, Days of Future Past, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What, the road cut threw me off there. What is standing out here? Brilliant individual story from The Winter Soldier. Story of friendship and of trying to make amends and, and just incredible action and, and just focusing on Steve Rogers. It's just a wonderful singular story. It stands out. Days of Future Past, again for me, Really enjoyed it. It wasn't first class levels, but I did really enjoy it. It was a good singular standalone movie. Guardians of the Galaxy, fucking one. One of the best experiences I've ever had in a theatre. Not laughed that much in a long time. Certainly at that point, going to see it. Amazing Spider-Man 2 was sort of, all right. Uh, even Edge of Tomorrow, I didn't realise that was a superhero movie. Apparently it is. I just thought that was an action movie. But there's an example, man, of doing it right. You've got three really interesting singular stories that work but they just so happen to interconnect into a greater sort of universe and they, they, they had success but this isn't the prime this is in the middle of the Infinity Saga Ant-Man again I loved Ant-Man you've got Paul Rudd there one of my all time favourite comedic actors and just actors in general well no Fantastic Four Age of Ultron I look back at that that film with a little bit more fondness than I did at the time at the time I thought it was a car crash it was Sort of Avengers 1.5, I think they were calling it, wasn't it? Something like that, anyway. Yeah, I think they were. I think it was 1.5. But you look back now, man, and it's certainly fucking streets ahead sort of some of the stuff we're getting now, and, and there's some funny moments in there. Was it underwhelming? Yes, at times it was, but still you had 
fucking Ultron in there, you had the buff of vision. There were some epic moments in that movie. A little callbacks as well with the, the hammer, Mjolnir. Obviously, ties into what we see in Endgame at the end with Steve Rogers. I knew it. Of course, Four says that just in case people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? I knew it. Again, for DC, we can maybe just scrub DC. I mean, I like the, the, the director's cut of Dawn of Justice. I think it's a more than watchable film. And I know Stevens maybe watched things like this. He was going down a rabbit hole with these animated things and he loves them. He swears blind by them. That's even a saying. Uh, but Suicide Squad, I mean, shit, really, really, really poor movie. Deadpool, more than makes up for it though. Fucking incredible film. Weird Wilson, met with a mouth, Ryan Reynolds. Singular, brilliant story. Again, confirming what Matthew has says. You need a singular, enjoyable film first. And it's just so happened, it just so happens that it actually has a superhero character at the centre of it. That is not the defining feature. It's the actual film that this superhero character is marinating in, resides in, if you like. Apocalypse, still not seen it, man. Not going to lie. One before Oscar Isaac. I just didn't get round to watching the movie. Civil War, one of my all-time favourite fucking Marvel movies. Absolutely stunning film. The, the, the sort of end point, the bookend of the Captain America trilogy, which for me is still the strongest trilogy. I mean, you could say Tom Holland's Spider-Man kind of, the John Watts Spider-Man trilogy. Maybe rivals it, but for me, Captain America, the trilogy, unbelievable. But again, singular storytelling. You can watch these films individually, man, and they just work. This is a big ensemble fucking movie. It's almost like an Avengers movie. But at the heart of it, there is a compelling, coherent story. It's about Steve Rogers. It's about James Buchanan, Bucky Barnes. Bucky Barnes. Is that right, James Buchanan? Have I just fucked that up? I don't know. Bucky anyway, not Bucky Barnes. I don't know where I get Barnes from. It's James Buchanan, isn't it? I'm going to search it up. I'm going to search it up because I think I've just made an art of that. Bucky. Bucky. Is it Bucky Barnes? It is Bucky Barnes. James Buchanan, Bucky Barnes. I should never doubt myself. Him and Tony Stark, that tree effect and how they have impacted on each other, friendship, it's got it all, man. And it just so happens to be a superhero film, man. That is not, I mean, it is the defining thing. This was when Marvel were at their absolute fucking hellacian point where everything they were putting out nearly was gold. But for me, it goes back to what Matthew Vaughan says. It's got an interesting, compelling story. And it just so happens to have superheroes in there. It would work without the superheroes. If you had that story about betrayal, about friendship falling apart in front of you, and about the, the sort of aftermath, that would work, would work without the superhero thing tacked on. Again, 2017. I like Homecoming, man. It's an all right film, but... I, I mean, yeah, it's, 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 it's an all right film. That's, I mean, it, I don't know if the actual coherent story... And making a great... I mean, it does. It's a film. It's a great film, man. They've made a great film, first and foremost. It's got Spider-Man in it. Didn't like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Ragnarok's another prime example. You bring in Taika Waititi. It's an incredibly thought-out film. It's completely different. It's a fresh lick of paint for the character. It just so happens to have four in it. It's a great film, first and foremost. And it's superhero, secondly. Hogan is the absolute fucking poster boy for this. You've made an unbelievable film. This could have been made by Martin Scorsese. It could have been made by Stanley Kubrick. Any great director of a bygone era could have made that film and it couldn't, it doesn't have a guy with fucking claws coming out of his knuckles. It could be a singular sort of human condition story, really drama, Oscar baiting story, and it would be every bit as fucking amazing. It just so happens to have Wolverine in there. So I'm not going to continue going through this. Needless to say, it's going to take forever because I'm fucking reviewing these films every time I talk about them, but... I think we have lost our way a bit. I mean, there's still outliers in there, as they did say. No Way Home. I love Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I still don't think it's as good as Vol the first film, but really, really good. I, I loved Wakanda Forever. But that was a poignant, fitting tribute to the late Chadwick Boseman. The Batman is an example. I thought Matt Reeves done an unbelievable job. There's a real great story there. There's a solid foundation moving forward for the patents in Batman. Uh, that's an example of doing it right. This is an example of doing it wrong. Really fucking wrong. So, I mean, I suppose even this year, I mean, it's, Barbie's not a superhero film. What f the fuck are they talking about? That's not a superhero film either. And Across the Spider-Verse, fucking amazing. Loved it, man. Really, really loved it. 
those worries about the cliffhanger ending, I fucking loved it. It's got me pumped to go and see the finale in this trilogy. I presume it's a trilogy. There's still outliers in there, man. There's still great movies getting made. And ultimately, it boils down to this. If you've got a coherent, brilliant story to tell, then there's no need to take a break. If you have got the right people behind the scenes making the decisions, and Lord knows they used to have that at Disney, they've still got it with Kevin Feige. I don't know what the fuck's going on at the executive level. They had Bob Chebec for a long time. Then he obviously was slapped down and moved out the, the room sort of stage exit stage left I don't know what the fucking saying is I, I always bury myself in holes by trying to come up with sayings that I, I, I inevitably butcher because I am terrible with sayings he was scurried out the door like a rat and also Bob Iger came back he's now more competent I think and hopefully he will steady that ship and allow Kevin Feige to sort of do his, his magic again if indeed he needs it I mean uh, I, I trust Kevin to get it right in the next five years I really do I think he will steady that ship it won't be as good as the Infinity Saga because we don't have Steve Rogers to only start we don't have a villain I mean Jonathan Majors touch, touch wood hopefully I mean I'm doing that because that's what you do I have no wood around me superstitious box I don't know what that even means what does the whole touch wood thing or what, what is that I don't what, this is another thing isn't it with humans where we come up with these stupid fucking things touch wood what why? Why do we do that? But yeah, I mean, hopefully he'll be able to continue playing the character of Kang. Hopefully we'll get an incredible performance leading into those sort of Avengers movies in the next couple of years. But is he going to top Josh Brown? His Thanos? I highly doubt it. Is there enough big personalities and interesting stories to be told and lead up to that Avengers story where it's going to actually topple what we got leading into Infinity Saga and in, uh, Infin Infinity Saga, Infinity War and Endgame. I doubt it. I do trust him to write the ship though. And I think we will get some better quality movies coming out. And I think moving forward, the strategy will be different. Is it, do they need time off? Probably some of them do. Maybe we don't have to be releasing as many movies as we're, as we're actually releasing just now. Is it going to happen though? Probably not. Because these studios are making, they've got money to fucking make. And I've already greenlit multiple phases, so they probably do need a little time off to, to recapture the creative juices. But again, I'm going to sort of play devil's advocate and say that Kevin Feige can produce that fucking magic. He can project manage and bring the right people in who will actually turn things around quickly. And James Gunn on the other side, I've got extreme confidence in him to do something special at DC. And Matt Reeves as well, with his Batman story, I think he's already got the creative juices He's already producing coherent films that just so happen to feature a superhero movie or a superhero. And then you're getting into the whole fucking thing. Is Batman a superhero? That's for another day. I don't think he is. He's just a hero. He might wear a cape at times, but he ain't no God-given. He's got no God-given ability. The man is just a millionaire with his hands on some of the best technology on the planet in that universe. He's not a superhero. He's a human. That's what makes him compelling.